Hello and welcome to this new After Effects tutorial from marmoworld.com and it's my pleasure to announce that this is the first tutorial that I'm not going to do myself but that is presented by Flow from flowmotion.eu. If you don't know Flow's website yet, definitely take a look at it. He has a lot of After Effects tutorials there that are really worth watching. But now, without further delay, let's welcome Flo and start with the tutorial. Thank you so, so much for this really nice and kind introduction. So before we get started, let's just quickly take a look on the final result and on what we are going to do and learn today. The first thing we have to do is of course tracking this short clip so that we can later on work on a stabilized version of it. And for this stabilization we will use the Mocha Import Plus which is a really really cool tool. And after we have created a stabilized pre-comp we will work in this pre-comp to get this nice animation going, this physic simulation where this circle is jumping out of the toaster and bouncing on the table. And after we have done that, we will create this shadow in the 3D space, which is reacting to the circle. So we have a lot of stuff to do here today, so let's get started. I have already created a new project file here and I have imported this breakfast table clip. So let's drag this on this new composition icon, let go and we have this new composition with this small clip. So when I scrub through it, you can see that it's just this small clip without anything jumping out of the toaster. Okay, so let's directly track this clip with Mocha. And let me quickly tell you something, because we are in CS5.5 right now and in the new Adobe After Effects version, the CS6 version, you can simply go to Animation and there will be the track in Mocha. But as I want to show you the whole workflow with the Mocha Import Plus tool, let me quickly open this window. And here I have the Mocha Import Plus installed. And here I have it. By the way, you can always click over here and then you can position your window wherever you wanna have it. Maybe next to the effects and presets. And later on we also need the eye expressions window somewhere so that we can work way easier. And for that let me just quickly tell you something. You can always select your workspace over here and if you have your windows positioned right where you want to have them, you can just save it by clicking on new workspace. And let me quickly cancel this because I have already created a workspace called Flow Motion. And there we have it, we have the Mocha Import Plus and over here we have our eye expressions for later on. It's just a quick tip so you can organize way better. For example, you can have a workspace for tracking, a standard workflow and of course you can use the pre-installed ones like paint, effects, animations and all that nice stuff. Okay, so let's quickly take a look on the Mocha Import Plus. Of course you have the Track in Mocha button and you have all of these settings here with colors. So red and green and some of those lights are on and some are off. And it always tells you what you can do when you have selected one of those options here. For example, later on we want to create a stabilized pre-comp. And if we select it, you can directly see that we can later on choose if we want to have it as a corner pin or as transform data. And we don't have anything loaded yet. So let's start by tracking in Mocha. So I ha have to select my clip and go to track in Mocha. Okay, here in Mocha I have my timeline and I can scrub through the clip and I can select an area which I want to track. 
I can go over here to the create X spline layer tool and I can now create a shape around the area which I want to track. And as I later on want my circle to jump out here, bounce somewhere here, bounce against here, I have to somehow use this area here. And by clicking the right mouse button you can close your spline. And you always have the opportunity to change the shape of your spline. Something like this looks fine for me. And now I just click over here on the track forward. For some more advanced trackings you could always go just one frame forward so you are always able to check your tracking. But as this should work quite good, let's just hit the track forward button. And you just have to keep in mind that the tracking gets slower the bigger your defined area gets. Okay, now the tracking is done. We can once again scrub through our clip and we can directly see that the shape is sticking quite good to the footage. You can see over here at the end when this box is sliding to the right you can see that we have kind of a issue here. But let's see how this will work later on. What we have to do now is we have to define the area which will be stabilized later on and for that we click on this surface button and now we can define what our stabilized precomp will look like later on because those four corner points will be the corner points for our pin tool later on which will distort everything in a way that we can use it. Okay, as we have done this let's just export the tracking data and for that we just go to file export tracking data and as we have seen in After Effects for our stabilized precomp we can use After Effects corner pin data or transform data but for now as we have defined this area already we want to use the corner pin and it also says over here supports RG warp which is red giant which is a plugin and Mocha import and that's what we want. So we click save. And as you can see here Mocha also creates a folder called Mocha tracks for us and I have already saved one of those breakfast table txt files so let's simply override it or even better call this one version 2 and hit save. Okay, now we can switch back to After Effects. Back here, we can now click on the Load button. And go to our folder and click on the Breakfast Table 02. And hit OK. It asks me which clip I tracked. For this composition we just have one and so everything is OK. We want a stabilized precomp and as you can see the light is now shining green so everything is fine and we could click the apply button now but before we do that let's just quickly duplicate this clip by hitting ctrl D or simply edit duplicate. Now we click on the top version and hit the apply button. And as you can see, nothing has changed. And when I scrub through the clip, you can see everything looks the same. And that's exactly the way it should be. And if I hide now the bottom clip, you can see that I now, in this breakfast table precomp, I just have the area which I had defined in Mocha. And when I go into the precomp now by simply double clicking on it. You can see that I have in here a composition which is full frame 
it has simply distorted the whole clip in a way that it is now stabilized. So as you can see the horizon stays the same. So let me just quickly show you what this could be good for. So I quickly create a new solid by layer new solid. Call this one the circle. Make it black, hit OK. And now I go to the mask tool, select the ellipse tool and simply create a circle and bring it over here to the corner of this toaster. And when I go back now into the breakfast table composition, you can see that it sticks to the toaster. Let me quickly also turn on the other version. And when I'm playing this one back, you can see it is distorted like it should be. Okay, so let's go back into our precomp. Let's maybe quickly call this one stabilized precomp, just to keep it organized. And we can also precomp our circle by going to a layer, and it's all the way down here, precompose. And you can also do this by hitting Control Shift C. And let's call this the circle. Okay, now we can open up our circle composition. And just to keep this also organized, let's click on this button, the region of interest, and just crop our circle. And now we can go to composition, crop, comp to region of interest. And there we have it. Now let's maybe ma make this look a bit nicer and for later maybe plug a hole in here that we can later on see the shadow a bit better. And to do that we simply hit M so that we can see our mask. Hit Control D for duplicate. And now we want to subtract the second mask. Now you can see nothing because the first mask adds the black and the second mask subtracts it. So by hitting M twice, MM, you can see the mask settings and now we just expand the second one. Okay, looks nice. And just for the sake of it, let's duplicate it. Go to solid settings, maybe make this one grayish color. Hit the F button for feather and simply feather this. Maybe also play just really quickly with our mask expansion. Okay, so just really, really quick and dirty just so that it looks a bit nicer. And now we can close our circle comp. And there we have it in our stabilized precomp. Now we want to start playing with our eye expressions to get this one jumping. I go over here to my eye expressions and click on my circle layer. Now I can open up the library. And here I have all of the expressions which I could use and I want the physics simulations and I'm going for the real-time ones. And over here I'm going to throw 2D with walls and hit OK. So here I have a few settings. I have the ground height, the elastic bounce ground, which tells me how much it is jumping or how much it is bouncing. I can define the walls and go a bit into the gravity. So, but let's just keep it simple. If we click in our composition window, we can now click Control R to get some rulers. And then we can just define somehow where we 
want everything to bounce against. So let's make the ground around here and our wall maybe around here. And we don't want a second wall for now. So now let me tell you how this whole thing works. To get this animation going, you just have to define two keyframes. So let's just go over here, hit P for position and make a first keyframe. Then we go forward a few frames and let it go out here. So with those two keyframes, you just control the speed and the degree of our throw. And if you now simply click on apply, you can directly see what it does. It creates an expression for us. And if we now scrub through the animation, you can see that it is bouncing, hitting a wall somewhere around here, so we have to define all of those small details. And maybe we want to also set a marker for the time where it should hit, so which is about the 29 second mark. And by the way, I just trimmed this clip, so you can always go to your composition settings and set the start time code to simply zero, hit OK. And now you have the real time from zero to six seconds. So about the three second mark, I want everything to start later on. And if I click over here and drag it onto here, then I have this marker as a reference. So what can we do now? We can define our floor because we want this to go a bit deeper. And we have this ground high over here. And you can see, as we have dragged out the rulers, it's about the 500 mark now, but it's the center. And as we want to go here, just have to make it a bit bigger, maybe 550. And now you have to click on it again and hit the apply button again, or you can simply click on this automatic button. So it will always update everything you type in here. And let's take a look if the ground height is right for now. Looks quite good, but it is bouncing over here at the moment. So we want this, it's about the thousand and something. So you can see it's thousand over here, but it is always looking for the center. So when we want this to be at the end, you can read over here, we have 1050 and we want this to go somewhere around 1150. So let's just type in 1150. Okay, now you can see that it is bouncing up here, but we of course want this to hit this box a bit higher. So what we can do now is simply bring those two keyframes a bit more together so that it's faster. Or maybe even go to the elastic bounce of the ground and make it a bit higher, maybe around 60. Just like so. Okay, and now we just have to time this by simply dragging those keyframes over here. Still a bit too early. Okay, and as we have this done really quick and rough, let's just take a look at our breakfast table composition. Okay, looking quite nice so far. And cool thing you could do now is simply to apply motion blur to the circle and to the composition. And of course, mask out the toaster and later on 
also the cup. So let's quickly do this before we start creating light and shadow. The fastest way to do that is simply to duplicate the pre-comp by hitting Ctrl D again, bring it on the top of everything. Now you can just hide it by clicking on this I button, go to your pen tool and draw a quick mask around here. And when we hit the I button again, you can see that it is now lying on top of everything. And of course it gets distorted in the same way. So when we take a look here now, it looks like our circle is coming out of the toaster. Of course we have to turn on the motion blur here also. And it is coming out of the toaster, hitting the box and rolling behind the cup. Really, really nice. So as we have now tracked the whole clip, animated everything in the way we want it and also in a very natural way, thanks to eye expressions, we can now start with the tricky part, which will be to add some light or in this case to add some shadows to make this look more realistic. So because if we go back to our breakfast table comp, to the main comp, you can see that it already looks quite good. But you can still see that this element doesn't belong to the rest of the clip because we are simply missing the shadow. But how can we achieve that it looks like there is some shadow on the table and on the wall? And the easiest way is to simply project some shadow on the table and on the wall. And to do that, we have to somehow build a small 3D scene which represents the table and the wall. And we do this in a very easy way by just adding two layers, one for the table and one for the wall. And then we have to position a light. So let's get started. At first we need a new solid and we can get one by hitting Control. Y and let's make this one white and we call it table and we hit OK. And let's directly make this guy 3D. If you can't see this 3D switch over here, can't see the 3D switch over here, you just have to click on this toggle switches. Okay, now let's make the table 3D. And when we hit the W button, we can rotate it. Now the tricky part is to somehow guess the right perspective. To make this a bit easier, you can just apply the grid effect to your solid. In this way, you just can see it a bit better. Let's hit the toggle transparency grid button. So now we somehow want to try to bring this in the same perspective as our table. And we have to scale this one up a bit. Maybe bring it a bit more down and something like this looks just fine for me. Now we can simply duplicate it by hitting Control D, call this one wall go into our transform properties and simply hit the reset button. Now we have it flat again and we can drag it back in into the depth and reposition this one. And if we have done this really rough and quick, we can go over here to our perspectives and go to the top view. Now you can see this red square represents our table and this one is our wall. So we can see that we have to bring this a bit closer together so that they really line up. And now we can go into a side view, maybe the left side. And we want to bring them as close together as possible. Okay, this looks quite good for me. So let's go back to our active camera view. And we can turn off the grid effect for now. 
And the next thing we want to do is we want to bring this wall and the table under our circle and make the circle itself 3D. Okay, now you can't really see that all of this is 3D because we don't have a real 3D perspective in After Effects. And to get one, we simply create a new layer, new camera. We can just take the defaults for now because we just take this camera as a little helper for us. Because if we now hit the C button, we can orbit around in 3D and there we see our small simulation of this 3D world. We just quickly disable the motion blur because everything will be faster now. You can see that the whole movement is now in 3D space. And now we can position everything a bit better, select both of those layers and bring them up until they interact with our circle. Just like that. And we can always go back into the front view by simply resetting the camera. There we are. Okay. And to get the shadow, we have to create a new light. So let's do this. Layer, new, light. And we can leave all of this at the defaults and go into all of those settings later. The only thing you have to be aware is that the light has to cast shadows. And we hit OK. And you can directly see what's happening. We get a really hard shadow over here and also our white layers are reacting to the light. But let's just do a few changes here and then everything will look way better, I promise. So in the moment when we enable the 3D switch, we also get material options for our 3D layers. So let's quickly go into there and we have a few options here. Of course, it doesn't need to cast shadows and we want it to accept shadows. But we don't want this layer to accept lights. So you can see that we have this hotspot over here and it gets darker. The further the light goes away, we don't want that. So accept lights off. Perfect. And the same thing for our wall. Doesn't need to cast shadows. It has to accept shadows but no light. Okay, now we go into our circle composition, material options, and this guy should cast shadows but it doesn't need to accept shadows and it doesn't need to accept lights. Now we can just play around a bit with our shadow settings that this shadow looks a bit more realistic. To do that we go into our light properties. And we can play a bit with the shadow darkness and also the diffusion of the shadow. And you can directly see that this looks pretty cool, but of course still not the way we want this to look. Because everything is white and we don't want this to be white because we want to see our footage. But how can we do that? Hmm. Keying out the white? Hmm. Not the best solution. Maybe the best solution is to simply change the blending modes. So we click on this toggle switches again, go to our blending modes and click on multiply. And now everything that has been white is now transparent. And you can directly see that it would be nice to also create a layer for this box here and maybe also for the cup and the toaster to make this look way more realistic. But for now, we just leave it at those two walls here. And now we can also turn on our motion blur again and also for the circle 
and go back into a breakfast table composition and let me just quickly make a ramp preview Okay, you can directly see that this looks a thousand times more realistic than without the shadow. And of course we have to work on this, maybe make the surface area in Mocha already a bit bigger or maybe play a bit with the light settings so that the shadow doesn't get all the way up here. So let me just quickly show you how you can do this. In the pre-comp, of course, you can always click on the light and everything reacts automatically to the light because everything is in 3D, all our material options are set properly. So now you can also take a look on the light directions of your shot, on the shadow darkness and diffusion and make all of this look very realistic. This is how I tracked the shot and how I animated it with, believe it or not, just two keyframes and how I created this cool looking shadow projection. And just to give this one a final look, let's just go back into our breakfast table composition. And you may have noticed that I have the shy switch enabled. So let me just click on this and I explain you what this button is for. And you can directly see that there are a few more layers showing up and that's just to keep your compositions organized because all those layers you don't want to use or you, you don't want to see all the time because they are maybe just guide layers. So you can always click the shy button for them. And if you click the shy button over here, they just disappear and you just have to handle with the compositions and layers that are necessary for the composition. But let me just show you what I did to create a final look because when I did this whole animation with the lettering saying start your day with After Effects, I was directly thinking about this 60s, 70s kind of American diner look and for that you of course need different colors. And I achieved that with a tint effect and the tint effect simply does what it says, it tints the footage and you can choose a black color so the new blacks become this color and the new whites become this light blue color. So let me quickly enable this and you can see what it does. And you can also play with the amount of tint because you normally don't want to overdo everything and have everything blended together with 100. But let me tell you something else. You can also have this at 100 and simply play around with the opacity of this layer because it's an adjustment layer. And for now, let's maybe just bring it up to 80. It's a bit much, but you can see the effect quite good. Next thing that I want to do is because now everything looks a bit washed out. I simply added another adjustment layer called this one contrast and brought out some levels over here. And I brought in the whites and a bit over here on the blacks. And if I turn them on, you can see that it's simply more contrast. By the way, you can also add more contrast by simply typing in contrast and use the brightness and contrast effect and simply bring up the contrast of this. Or you could even bring out some curves. And what you could do here, you could make everything brighter that is already bright and everything darker that's already dark. And this also helps adding more contrast. So now you have the opportunity to choose which look you want to have. Maybe like so. The next layer I added is simply a vignette layer. It's a black solid where I have drawn a vignette. Just quickly hit the M button twice for all the mask settings. So you can see I have brought out the mask feather really, really high to 440 pixels. When you hit the U button, twice you can see all the parameters that have been changed on this layer. So you can also see that I have played with the opacity and simply brought it down to 20. And this is 
what this one looks. And for an overall focus, because th this is really just a small focus on the center of all of this, where my action is going to happen, I have also created a blur layer. It's also an adjustment layer where I have simply applied the fast blur, because the fast blur, as it says, it's the fastest to render. And I have simply copied this mask and pasted it onto this layer so that I could now blur the same part of the picture like I have chosen for the vignette without the blur and with the blur. And you can directly see your view is now going straight to the center of this picture. And this is exactly where the action is going to be. Okay, and that is everything that I have done with my project. Oh, okay, you may think now, and what about this nice text, this start your day with After Effects that is swinging and wiggling all around. But let me just tell you that this is simply another eye expression you could use and it takes you about one or two minutes to get this whole animation going. And you can also find a tutorial on this technique on mamuworld.com. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I would be happy that especially those of you who don't want to use expressions in After Effects that much because they simply think that they are too complicated, that they have enjoyed it and that they think about using eye expressions in the future. So for now I have to say thank you for sharing your time with me and I wish you a lot of fun in After Effects. <laughs>